2022 Christmas Village Food Tutorial Series. Sometimes all the errors I make can not be corrected. Sorry guys. And that's precisely what happened with this entire section. Not true. The dome, the underdome, the rotating plate with the motor are still the original ones, but Everything else is brand new. Cut, recut, and then recut once again from scratch before assembling it. And on Monday night I was up until 4 a.m. and raged, furious, angry all together, so I haven't filmed anything about that, but I will explain why I redid everything in my final recap of this part 10. Now, I need a cage inside this dome because a lion tamer, a couple of lions, a tiger, without a cage, it is too dangerous. And I will try to go with some real metal cage. Let's try, but before I have to make some more works on it and then some colors, guys, because right now, sincerely, all this while it is scarily disturbing me. And so, let's try to reduce those 60 more hours still needed to complete the three ring circus. Fastener and fasteners, guys. I need to introduce you this argument before going ahead with something concerning the dome here and the under dome, the arts. What is a fastener? A fastener is a way of connecting, joining, linking two or more things together, allowing a permanent or a non-permanent link connection. Let me explain easily with something very easy. If I need to link together these two brackets at 90 degrees or in other ways one following the other or with an angle and I want them to be connected non-permanently, I need a way to fasten them in in such a way, the most one, one of the most, one of the most common mm, or known um, fastener is a bolt and a nut. With a bolt and a nut, you can assure the link between those two brackets in a non-permanent way. This means that if you need to disassemble something, you will be able to disassemble it very easily. You use a bolt and you join together two pieces, you put them at an angle, then you use the bolt and you straighten the bolt until you get the desired angle. I will not use some tools to uh, tighten that up, but this is the principle. And the, those are connected, uh, they can't slip away, they can't slide away, and it is a non-permanent solution. Uh, maybe having soldered this will have been a permanent solution, for example. Or soldering the bolt to the nut, once everything is tied, it is a permanent solution. You will to damage something to disassemble this, uh, this thing here. But this is a non-permanent uh, solution, okay? This link join 
fastened together to or more pieces. So, why I have introduced this very easily to you? Because the dome here, right now, is simply accommodate on top of the underdome of the arch, but it can slide and follow down at any moment during all the season. I don't want this and I think you wouldn't love it the same way I don't. Solution glue everywhere, especially between the connectors here and the underdome. Well, it's done, nothing more to, to worry about. But I don't want these two pieces, those two pieces, the dome and the underdome, to be connected together permanently. I want a way to disassemble those two parts whenever I need it or if I want it. How will I do that? <laughs> I had to think about this for an entire day, you guys. Um, I could use uh, some uh, uh, magnets, for example, one glued here on the connector here, and one glued on the arcs there, and then look together. It connects. It is not a. It's not a permanent connection, a permanent link. Okay, I can disassemble it whenever I want. But I would have used some magnets, creating some thickness. A space between the dome and the underdome, the arcs. I don't want that. I can use, for example, some velcro, less thickness, less thick, and gluing made here and thermal here, oops, and the fiber here. I can get it done with some velcro, okay? I can use some zip ties here, it's a uh, half permanent solution, if I needed to remove it, I simply need to cut the zip ties and change whatever I need to change, then reassemble it. Uh, two zip ties, one from each side, multiply it ten times, okay, it can be done, and so on, maybe I'm forgetting something, but you can have many, many solutions, but uh, as I am concerned, none of them will be suit my needs. So, why I introduced this? Because uh, uh, I was inspired by bold and nuts. Just remember that you have also the help of uh, gravity as uh, Newton told us. This dome is applying some forces vertically towards the floor, uh, as well as the arcs apply some forces towards the floor. Those have some weights, simple basic physics. So maybe I will not use a Enough. And uh, let's uh, see it together. Let's imagine that this is my arc, my underdome, and this is my dome here, one on top of the other, like. I simply need to not allow the sliding of the dome 
on top of the underdome of the arch. Sliding, this is causing problems. The underdome uh, will not slide because it is heavier and the friction between the styrofoam that will, uh, will be underneath on the layout will prevent the dome the, the arcs here, the other dome, to slide. The very important thing is to um, stop the sliding of the dome on top of the, of the arcs. Let's imagine you have this as a, a solution and let's just imagine you have some sort of a board like that. This here we have some bigger hole and some uh, tiniest board. This is uh, not exactly a board having the same diameter of the, those holes here, but it is important to, uh, um, to understand the concept here. Just simply adding this with the correct, uh, the correct dimension will prevent the sliding. I remove simply here and the sliding is once one more time possible. With simply putting this, it is blocked. It's not my intention to screw it down because it, the, the dome will never go up, okay, or down. Down it has the support of the under dome and up it, it can fly away. <laughs> Okay, just simply adding that will help me. And whenever I need to do something under the dome, I will remove the board or something like a board and remove the and remove the dome from on top of the under dome. Very easy at least for me I think even for you. So at the end uh, I needed to find a way to duplicate, to replicate this system here. But obviously like everything is now I can't achieve that. So I had to remodel something. What? Not the entire art, guys. Let's talk about, and let me use this as support because it is black. Oops, sorry for the camera, guys, but let me use this because it is black. It is the opposite side of what I generally use as a cutting mat there. This is the four-way connector that is here, guys, at the base of the fourth, first level, as you have seen in two part. No, um, yes, in part uh, eight, yes, in part eight. Sorry, a little, a little uh, memory problem, and it is used to connect the base to the other section. This little guy here, vertically, one, two, three, and four ways. But if and when I remodel it, I simply modify the design, guys. Look. From this side here, they are identical, okay? They have one, two, three, and four ways. But if you look from the top, you see that I added to the, <laughs> to the design some sort of a strange polygon with a hole in it. If I replace those little supports here, those 10 supports, the structure will be respected because here the angles are the same. But I will also have the addition of this hole that has a di diameter of 3.1.
millimeters. Okay, and then I have also modeled something very strange, guys. I have also modeled. Sorry, I'm here. This a little piece here that will go in some sort in a way under the first one here like that sorry it's not easy to to show you in this like that this on top of the other and this has not a uh, um, a pass-through hole. You can see that here from this side I have the hole but this side has not a hole in it. So it is a blind hole. Okay, It is a blind hole because you can't see light through it. Okay, And if I place some sort of a bolt in these holes here I will assure the connection between those two pieces like that in just a second okay I forgot my three mils skewer bamboo skewer and if I use my bamboo skewer that is three mils in diameter like that or maybe even without the pointy tips like that okay you see that I can get it through not easily because I don't want these to be uh, sliding everywhere and then I use the other hand like that okay those two pieces are connected right now I think you can see okay let me bring once again my black mat here. The two, co the two parts are connected and they can't slide in, in any way. But when and if I need it, I can just remove the skewer. Okay. Uh, obviously, I will not use uh, uh, such long skewer. We cut small pieces but obviously you have uh, figured out that this support here will be replacing the original supports I have here here on the dome like that okay but where will I use this little guy here and you may have noticed that this little guy here is sorry is not symmetrical is not a square but have a particular shape okay here it has a particular shape and maybe I will approach oops I will approach this without trying not to break anything very difficult please look here I think you will be able to see here you have almost the same design if I place this little guy here sorry like Oops, I don't know if I can like this in the corner and precisely at this point here gluing it there I will be able to make the connection between the new modeled connector and and the under dome here hope this is on focus guys because without the black support but this is a little too big to just uh, handle it with two hands. Okay, I hope uh, this no, it seems okay on the camera. So I will need 
to sorry to glue ten of these strange pieces all around those angles and then simply use the connectors the new designed connectors on top of them a couple of hours later guys and it's plain middle of the night it is 2 6 in the morning <laughs> very late sorry and this is the result attaching the pieces with some epoxy glue here all around I've attached those little pieces all around and I also replaced the uh, first layer of support like in this case and I will place them like that then I also prepared some one centimeter long pieces of uh, um, bamboo skewers one centimeter long three meters diameter and I will use them like this Okay, I will place them all around. Good. And now the dome on top of them using the same technique. Good, now look, I'm, the dome is stable and it doesn't slide anywhere, okay? The connection is done and guys, this is not glue at all, I simply have to use some little tool or screwdriver in this case and remove everything and I can remove the dome from the top of the under dome okay but in this way everything is more stable everything is more balanced and this is a perfect almost perfect building construction so i will need to do all the extra work but two and a half hours well spent guys I think and now I can add some glue if needed in the connection points PVC white glue like that and the rest is, is solid guys and once again and it can also rotate and uh, even here it will be absolutely removable so now let's continue with something else this building absolutely needs some bricks some old bricks some damaged bricks something to get it very aged and a little ruined if possible so i made another bunch of different sizes of bricks here i have four mils thick bricks three mils bricks and 3.5 mils thick bricks uh, wash it with some um, stones and pebbles as I usually do and now let's see if I can build something different here here some PVC white glue
guys, I think that this building here has changed its aspect. I don't know if you concur with me, but I think it's quite differently different from what it was a couple of hours ago, not three hours ago, sorry. And um, so the only side where I haven't glued some bricks is the back because it, it will be against the styrofoam from one level to another so useless to put bricks on the back too and uh, this is the front I will need to paint everything then add two things before closing this second novelist feature but it's time to get some rest. I need a cage inside one of my rings, okay? It is a ring, it is circular, a circle, not so easy to build. Yes, yeah. I know what you are thinking. I have two 3D printers, why not going with some 3D printed cage? Too easy guys, I already told you that I would limit to the maximum the use I will be doing uh, of my 3D printers. So I will try to go old fashioned way with this cage. Plastic cage, yes I can do a plastic cage, but I will try to go with a pure metal cage. Not easy to build guys, I will need some techniques, I will need to use some techniques I haven't used before in any of my past two seasons, but I will try to go with it. A square cage, very easy to do, path path for uh, four sides and then go up, but this is a circular cage. Maybe with an, with an open door also. I need to figure out how to build it. I could build it with some stainless steel, guys. This is pure stainless steel wire, 2 millimeters uh, wire. Yes. Uh, doable. Yes, I can do it. But the diameter is too small. But I also have some copper wire guys, 2 millimeters copper wires and the copper is way more suited for a steampunk cage. And something more it is important concerning the uh, copper, I will come to that. How can I get perfect circles to put inside this ring starting from something that has not the same diameter I need to wrap the copper or the steel around something that is hard enough to sustain the torsion and I will explain why and also having more or less the same diameter. So you can use something plastic? No, because the torsion that I will need to apply will crush, crack the plastic. I will need to use, for example, a glass, for example, a vase or something metal, okay? Uh, that is a similar to what I need. This is an 18, di an 18 centimeters diameter circle. I will need something similar to this diameter. By pure hazard, guys, because otherwise I will be, I don't say the third. Uh, I have an old pot here. An old pot that is 18 centimeters in diameter. But guys, this is a too big diameter you can see that it will not fit inside so it is the inside diameter is 18 and the outside is some more between 
18.4 centimeters. You can see that I can reach the middle of the uh, portal here where the, um, the diameter is stable. Here it is just the end. Also, the diameter is not purely 18, but it tends to get uh, narrower uh, once I get to the base of the bigger once I get to the out outer, um, to the top. I don't want to damage the, my copper, so I will explain with my stainless steel wire that I have many, many meters, what I intend to do, okay? I will cut, uh, let's say, this. I will need to wrap it here. By also pure chance, I have some limits here, representing by this and in here, by the handles of the cattle, and then I will need to do as tight as possible, let me go this way and this way to start, as if I wanted to tighten this like that, and then tighten, 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 maybe going even further okay this is very tight but then i will also need to cut some more materials guys because this is too too wide okay then i will need to cut some more centimeters from one side and from the other but once i did this Okay, I will go as close as possible to the uh, straight side here. I will cut one side and then I will cut also the other side. And you can see that it is almost a perfect circle, guys. Maybe I will slide it. Once closed, it is almost a perfect circle. Then inside it, but inside this, if it is too big, you can see that here, uh, in this section here, you are an overlapping of the both ends, okay? And this is not good. Uh, then I will have to solder the two and the two ends and stainless steel cannot be soldered with a standard soldering station and some um, and some soldering material this is a soldering material solder wire okay this can be soldered you will need to have much more heat to solder but the copper can easily be sold one end to the other with some uh, soldering uh, wire that's why i will go with some copper instead of stainless steel
good guys, I think the cage is done and I made, oh, oops, I also made some sort of a door here uh, with some horizontal uh, segments here in order to add the impression that this is a door. Uh, everything else is as you are just seeing it. Okay, even if it was a copper, I painted uh, with two layers of copper because I needed to mask where I made um, the joining uh, sections between horizontal and vertical segments. Only the horizontal disc, uh, only with the horizontal disc, I used the, the uh, uh, soldering the soldering station, so I soldered. Uh, only the uh, horizontal uh, circular rings. Um, all the other connections uh, are secured with epoxy glue, guys. This was the only solution because one thing is joining uh, a circle, okay, one thing is joining perfectly vertical, uh, all the other segments, and this is not perfect, this is not completely vertical, but hey. This is an handmade cage, an handmade lion cage. Oh, it is upside down. This is the app, and I can figure it out because the app are just one horizontal segment between the second and the third uh, ring circle, and here we have one, two, three horizontal segment for this uh, little thing. Uh, let me try it. Bush. Yes, and it works, guys. This is, I don't know if you can see it, but this is the result of so many hours. And inside it, you will have lions and tiger. So, a little stretch, no, no, a little. Uh, um, claustrophobic there guys because I've, uh, I've uh, uh, used another centimeter of, um, of the 18 centimeter diameter but I think the two lions one here one there and then the tiger will fit inside this cage so this is the result of my circus cage Okay guys, I think it is time for a black wash on top of this new feature. I just protected the light bulbs with some paper tape, mask tape, it is white but uh, everywhere else has a color and simple water and uh, a lot of water and uh, some black to um, do a black wash. I will remove the top because this is removable, as you have seen, and I will start with this little baby here. Black wash is done, guys. Okay, it's uh, normal to have the bricks uh, having some different colors because they aren't uh, cut from the same piece, and someone has a clean, smooth surface, others have uh, both faces uh, cut by the hot wire um, uh, machine. So, uh, different uh, roughness of the surface of the bricks. But this is how I will start. Then some black, uh, sorry, some gray, other shadows, and uh, grays even on the roof here and on the floor, but with some brown and green on the floor, etc. The horizontal parts, vertical parts, less 
uh, green and brown. I will wait this to dry out before continuing. It is my usual painting technique, so I didn't show you everything, but here is the result, guys. I painted with this gray here, guys. Just regular gray with a little tip of white, so pure gray and white. This is the gray and this is the white, guys. Then some, um, some green, some brown and some gold for the door with the brown for the door. Uh, copper for the wire and the fences, uh, the bulb, I haven't touched them, and then here is the roof, the top of the roof. This is a brand new building, completely different from last week. Three hours of work, and this is the result. I've also made a little hole here for what will be inside here, guys. A little surprise, maybe no, maybe nothing, nothing. Um, so a little, obviously it is for a wire uh, because what will be inside here will need some power. And then, and then that's all, guys. A green, I may, <coughs> I designed the floor here very regular because these need to be regular, also the, and the roof here. Green, black, gray, brown, copper, gold. Everything is here. And now let's continue with something else. Let's have a base color for one of these rings. Okay, outside blue, inside red, but I want some pattern here. I want some stars. Let's try to have some stars. Okay guys, uh, I've done the three rings, uh, they are all different, uh, the, first, the second one is blue, red and gold, uh, all three rings are red inside, okay, but this one is uh, blue, red, gold, blue, red, gold alternate, okay, and then the first one, uh, um, I couldn't get a decent result with the uh, pattern uh, and painted here with the uh, model and then painting. So I printed out uh, some uh, little stars and then painted the yellow and then glued them here on the base of the second uh, ring. This is the result, guys. So one, two, three, three rings, three different three different attraction here in the circus and this time for part 10 the final recap will start from the three ring circus guys and you can see at work almost half i did in this entire part uh, maybe you are wondering uh, let me place the camera why i had those bolts and those brackets inside the two other rings. Very simple, guys. The 
cage is pure copper. The cage plus two lions plus the tiger plus the lion tamer equals 420 grams, almost half a kilo, guys. Uh, Ballot man with his cannon, it's no more than 100 grams. The knife thrower with his with uh, the, his assistant is no more than 120 grams. Sorry for the knife thrower. I only have the um, uh, knife thrower assistance because I misplaced the knife thrower. Sorry, guys. And so I had to counterbalance the weight. Otherwise, the platform from horizontal would have went this way. And I had a lot of friction, guys. Now it is almost silent, luckily for me. And for next part, I will have to figure out a way to add weights inside the other two rings without having bolts and brackets inside. I, I, will, I will try to figure out a solution. Uh, very creative. I, need, I will need to be uh, at least uh, creative. Uh, this entire part, guys, has been completely redone okay i did everything scratch new last monday today is uh, sunday so last monday why this is what i had there guys okay this is this piece here is exactly what now stands there under the platform i thought maybe i will have a slope here and you can see that i have a, a slope sorry guys maybe from this angle you can see I've, i i had the slope but the slope yes helped me having the platform rolling smoothly getting around smoothly but also generate a gap allowing everything to be seen under it and i need also a flat surface here so instead what i did i marked where the perimeter of the platform was then cut exactly the perimeter on this little piece of styrofoam then enlarged it uh, about five millimeters five millimeters the groove there and the part that I cut that was under the platform, I cut eight millimeters. It, now it is underneath it, and you can see, and it represents the exact opposite, the exact specular surface I had here, but it's eight millimeters uh, below the floor. This way I have a space for the rotating table to turn without the friction, and everything is smooth. Same thing from this angle here and from the corner there. Same exact thing. Here I have a different solution because I have the railway underneath it. For guys, I have the railway. So I had to make a, <coughs> a patch there, <laughs> a patch for the platform. But here I will have all the space I need for adding the other uh, circus figurines and also for uh, training, etc., and uh, other things. Um, the three rings, uh, colorful, yes, I love them. I still need to paint the under dome and the dome. And what you see, what you have seen at the beginning is this, the result is this, okay? With this, in this way, the whole structure is uh, <laughs> joined together. The two structures are joined together and I simply have one and only piece there, okay? Very, very, uh, very useful like this, like they are not, not useful, uh, much more adapted in like this, in this way. Sorry for my English at this hour, it's very late and I'm still... Uh, filming my final recap, guys. Let me place the camera in a fixed position there, guys. Uh, I will try to have the main figures figuring this way uh, for the three rings. 
then what will I need to add? Sorry, I will place my mic there. Uh, some bench there on the three corners. Some bench. Sorry, guys. Uh, from the other side, guys. Let me go from the other side. Where, guys, big surprise, the second feature is complete, is done. And be prepared for the shock, guys. I will place my camera here and then I will go up like that guys this is the second feature this is dedicated to another victorian era novelist i think you may figure out in a second a millisecond uh, the writer the novelist i don't want to tell you anything the big guy has green skin and a couple of boards on the side of his neck and uh, something else on his head. <laughs> what is this? And I wanted something very, very particular. I wanted, uh, sorry, I will put my mic in another position like that. I wanted something that if J comes towards him, it gets scared because the position is almost like I'm trying to jump over, even if it doesn't look that way. So very scary. Uh, it is somehow trying to go over the fences but this is what I want not maybe not so scary maybe it is more of a joke I don't know guys but please allow me to switch off all the lights guys as always and I wanted to show you the effect of the big giant ball in the back of the building and now you know why I added this hole why I add this hole uh, in the uh, building to have this plasma ball and why I have the removable roof because this plasma ball is very fragile okay so I thought maybe during the season it will break down and I will need a way to, a quick way to replace it I have two of them right now this one and the spare one because I knew that the, um, the glass around the the, the real glass, what is the, the ball, the glass ball is very fragile because it is very, 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 very thin. Otherwise, you can't have the effect there. Uh, I still uh, need some more lights, some more street lamps to have the light getting in front, in the face of, the, of Mr. Green Skin there. But this is steampunk, guys. This is pure steampunk. Electricity, volts, steam, all together. I remember you once again that Gilles Verne, Edison, all that people were suited for the steampunk movement. Even if in Victorian times steampunk didn't exist, but this is how I wanted to represent the book and the novelist. Each time I make a little step towards the end of the project, a new problem appears. And you may think that this is an easy problem to solve, but it's quite the opposite, guys. I needed to invent a new form of wave then hide the wave in some sort, in a, in a way that I don't know 
in order to avoid to ruining the scenes inside the other two rings. Most probably I will spend the next three nights on it and by the end of tomorrow night I will also start crying a little bit. Anyway, 15 more hours done on the three ring circle, so no more than 45 to the end of the task. And sorry for the last minute the um, decision to modify the joining between the dome and the other dome, but I wanted a more solid building there, a more solid structure, without having the dome risking to uh, slide here and there, way more suited for a three ring circus like that, guys. And <laughs> sorry for the surprise, but I wanted this as a surprise, so I didn't tell you that uh, my intention was to complete the second feature dedicated to a Victorian era a novelist. But now it is complete, and guys, please note that this novelist is as a steampunk as a Jules Verne, even more, no, at the same level, let's say at the same level, and you may think that the novelist is American, but it is pure, it, but it is. I know I should say he or she, but until you figure out who the novelist is, let me talk by it. So it is British from UK, uh, traveled all over Europe, I know. Um, not as scary as it should be, Maybe yes, but I wanted it like that. <laughs> Waiting for you uh, while you pass through the park, because there will be a, a little park there, trying to catch you, trying to scare you, trying to <laughs> jump at you. And now you, you understood the reason of my little hole on the roof of that building, but the plasma ball there. I think it's pure in sync with the novel guys. Electricity, uh, head is on a Tesla, were well suited for the steampunk movement, even if they didn't know that. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, and give big thumbs up. Thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing my absolutely awful English and if you wish and only if you wish see you next time bye